Hi, it's Keith Van Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Um, today, what I want to talk about is uh, a little bit of physics. So, we're going to talk about IOR or index of refraction. I get a lot of questions in class about this, and, and there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding. So, the index of refraction, um, real quickly, is a ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum as compared to the speed of light in any given material. So in other words, as light travels, you know, in a vacuum, it's going 300 million meters per second, 186,000 miles per second. But when it hits water, it slows down, all right? That water adds some resistance to the light. So the index of refraction is expressed in a ratio. Um, so if you look on the screen here, I'm looking at the index of refraction for um, a preset index of G.652 fiber, or G.657. So these are these are 652 and 657 are basically the Swiss Army knives of fiber. Uh, 652 is a general purpose fiber and 657 is general purpose but bend insensitive. So you'll find this a lot in your um, fiber to the home type projects and pond projects. Each wavelength has its own index of refraction. So at 1310 it's 1 1.4675, at 1550 it's a 1.468. And basically what that means is that light moves 1.468 times faster in a vacuum than it does through this G.652 glass. Understanding that, that becomes part of the time domain. So when we talk about an OTDR, an optical time domain reflectometer, the OTDR works in, in what is called the time domain. So it's a lot like driving your car. If you get in your car and you say, I'm going to go 30 miles an hour and drive for one hour, you can calculate out that you would go 30 miles. If you said, I'm going to drive 60 and drove for an hour, you could calculate that you did 60 miles. So the OTDR uses this time domain. It knows how fast light moves in the fiber because we're telling it. So what it does is it actually uses a time. So knowing that it's moving that fast, it can calculate out when it sends out a pulse. And by the time it gets that pulse back, how long some number of microseconds or picoseconds to get to the end and get back, divide by two, and you get a distance calculation. If you change this number, what happens is you're not changing how fast the light's going in the fiber. We can't change that. That's intrinsic. It's built into the fiber. I mean, it is what it is. You live 30 miles away. I'm going to drive to your house at 60 miles an hour. You could expect me to get to your house in 30 minutes. Now, if I drove at 30 miles an hour and you didn't have a watch on and I drove at 30 miles an hour, and got there, you would think that I had been driving for 30 minutes because you have no reference of that time. If you start changing these, these IORs, we start getting distance results skewed on your OTDR. I have a, over here, this is a, a 50 kilometer, 50.492 kilometer um, spool of fiber. And it is, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is like a, a 653. It's a dispersion shifted fiber that I use for uh, fiber characterization training. We're going to leave it on G.652 for, for, for now. So we're not, we're not super concerned with the accuracy of the length, um, but we do know that it's right around 50 and a half kilometers. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to our OTDR and we'll take a shot now it's set up and it's defaulted out at G.652 so we should get fairly similar distances based on the 1310 or the 1550. So as you can notice right now what we've got is we have um, up at the top if we can see this it says 1310 so our 1310 is the green trace right now which is active um, and we can see that they're both pretty much the same. We're um, at 167, so 167,190 feet. Um, and if we go over to our 1550, 
then our 1550 is 167.267.38 feet. So, you know, pretty close there, right? Notice what's going to happen here. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our setup and real quickly, we're just going to go to our analysis and go to our index of refraction. So, um, if you don't know the IOR of the fiber, if you haven't looked up the manufacturer specifications on it, don't change this, okay? So, this is what happens. Let's go into our user and we're going to have on our 1310 we have the IOR set to 1.7 so that means that the light is going slower in the fiber all right so the higher that number the slower the lights moving the closer you are to one the faster the lights moving right we're getting closer to the speed of light in a vacuum so in the 1550 we're at 1.465 so the lights moving faster at, at the 1550 wavelength through the fiber and slower at the 1310. So right now we're at 1550. We're looking at um, roughly the same length, the uh, 160,000 feet or 162 kilofoot. And then what we're going to do is it's going to move over to the 1310 where it's at a 1.7 and see what happens to our distances here. So now we have a 1.7 and that's the green trace right there. And if you look at this, you notice that our 1.7 is reporting out at 140, well, we'll call it 145 kilofoot, right? So it's a lot shorter than the actual fiber length. And the reason that is, so 144, 324 on the 1310, but the 1550 shot longer. And that's because of the inconsistencies in the index of refraction. The 1310 thinks you're moving at 30 miles an hour, and the 1550 thinks you're moving at 60 miles an hour. The light speed didn't change. We can't change how fast that is. When you change IOR, you're not changing the length of the fiber, you're changing the calculus. And that just gives you errant results. And so you want to be careful when you do this. Again, if you have a situation where you're getting this type of reading and you see this dissimilar lengths, somebody's gone in and changed some IORs in that. So really simply, if you don't know what the IOR is, some machines allow you to default out the, uh, the specific um, IOR settings. So again, keep this in mind as you go. There is no technical reason that a technician should ever have to actually change the IOR on these machines. Uh, again, I don't recommend you change it unless you have manufacturer specifications and you know exactly what the IORs are. If you don't know those, real simple, just keep it in your default uh, IOR. Advice, don't mess with it. As usual, like, subscribe, bells, things like that. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, be safe, and we will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.